Hi, welcome back to ODE. My name is Paulo and I'm here again for another pen review. Today I'm going to show you the Parker 51, the aerometric version. Because I think this is an interesting video to, to make. This is really a classic of fountain pen history. And I think now the new release of the Parker 51 for the, this year of 2021 is, is all around. Everyone talks about the new Parker 51. So before I make the video of the new Parker 51, I think I must uh, record the video of this older version of the Parker 51. And so this is what I'm here for today. And I'm showing you this pen. This pen came in a big variety of boxes and presentations. There is lots of history about the Parker 51. You can find lots of information out there on the internet. And you can also find some information here, maybe on this book, which is called Parker 51 by David and Mark Shepherd. And you have lots of information about the history, the designs, the models, the inks, the packaging, the advertising, everything. So you can have really interesting information here. And I advise you to check this book if you are really interested, interested in Parker 51 history. This particular pen was, it belonged to my grandfather. And when he died, I got his pen that is very worn and beat up. This is like an imitate of lizard skin and says Parker there in golden letters and it has the code of the packaging there, L.2. Dot. And here we have Parker 51 on the lid with his satin uh, pillow type thing and here the pen bed with the pen I think I went out of camera uh, the the, the camera the pen bed here and the pen let's take the pen out close the box and put it away now I showed you this pen lots of times already and you can even see it on my video that I made for Apple Boom with my top three pen video and one of the pens, more than a top three, I, I went for the most uh, personal pens video and this is one of those because this pen belonged to my grandfather and it has his name engraved there. It was usual for people to engrave pens that were a gift or if you were kind of a businessman, he, he worked in insurance company so maybe he had his pens around and maybe there were lots of pens that were almost the same and he had this pen engraved it was engraved in white and then I revived the engraving with a crayon so but that doesn't matter let's take a look at the pen the Parker 51 had lots of variation about the history I want just to say something very quickly if you want you check other uh, resources like that book or you can check my video that I made about my thoughts on the new Parker 51 and I, there I go through a lot of characteristics of the older Parker 51. The older Parker 51 was released in 1941. In 1949 the aerometric system was replaced by the vac um, the aerometric system replaced the vacuumatic uh, filling system in 1958, the cartridge filling system was introduced and in 1978, the year I was born, the Parker 51 production ceased. So, this is a pen that lived for a long time, since 1941 to 1978, with several changes in the, the way the pen is made. The pen. So, what we have here? We have a gold plated pen, uh, cap, which 
this one is called the costume cap, the costume black, which means it, it has a black barrel, and this costume cap, which is the cap with the groups of five lines. There you, the lines are mostly together, but when you go up, the lines meet up into a point for groups of five to the top of the pen. It has a pearl plastic jewel on the top. It has the classic arrow shaped clip, which works quite well. And then it has Parker engraved there on the bottom. And it says there rolled gold, which means it has more gold than just gold plated. However, this pen is very worn, so there are lots of places where the gold uh, layer is lost. The barrel is made of lucite, a very resistant plastic. Black, it has a little breather hole on the bottom there. You uncap it just by... it's a friction fit pen. The inside of the cap, I will not... I'm not uh, able to show it to you. If, uh, even if I had a light to put here, it is not easy to show. It has kind of a fingers to grip the pen there. So it grips very well this pen. It has the hooded nib. It is almost all covered. This was something very new that was an exclusive by Parker, soon made for by many other companies. And then you unscrew the barrel. You have plastic threads. You have there to fill press ribbed bar. This. Uh, firmly four times holding the pen down. Wipe point with soft tissue. And there you can see again. Parker 51. So it is it. There is some corrosion there on the bar, but I'm not worried with that because the original SEC still works. There were many variations about these, about inscriptions, the fillings, lots of different variations through times, even different sizes. So this is the pen. The pen was made like this to, for, to allow for Parker Quink ink, which was quink, a quick drying ink, so it was Quink, the name, for this ink to dry quickly and this way with the nib covered here, the surface of the nib that was exposed to the air was smaller, so it would not um, dry on the pen. So you could have a quick drying ink that it would dry the writing on the paper, but it would not dry on the pen. And it was a good thing, but to have that kind of nib, they used a very small tubular nib that wrapped around the feed inside an ink collector. So the, the ink providing system was very nicely done here. And they could even, they, they spent a lot of money uh, developing this pen and advertising the pen, but they sold millions of it. So they won very large amounts of money. And um, they could also save some money on the nibs because the amount of gold of this gold nib was really, really small. It's very hard to make a review of a Parker 51 because they are all outside. Everyone made a review of a Parker 51. It's quite difficult for me to say something interesting that I know... I, I, because I know that everyone talked about it, it's hard to say something new. The pen posts well, very well, and quite deeply. And this is one of those pens that are really nice when posted, and I think they look better like this. You have to think, in 1941, this kind of design was really unique. And so it was unique. Lots of people uh, copied the design. Just about the writing experience, I want to, sh to say something to you. I think this pen is quite comfortable to hold. It's slim, more on the slim side, but girthy enough. You can hold the pen wherever you want, and if you want to hold the pen higher, you can put the cap on the back of the barrel, and so it, you, have, you have a longer pen, so no problem where you hold it. I have to say that many times I prefer to 
all the pens where I find some kind of different texture, so I tend to hold the pen here on the clutch ring. And I think this is about all I have. Ah, no, there is another little detail, is that when this pen was introduced, people were used to pens with large nibs. Uh, I'm thinking about Parker Vacuumatic. I don't have a Parker Vacuumatic here, but for example, when you look at the Parker Dual Fold, you really know how to hold the nib because it's really visible. This way is the right way to put on the paper. If you hold the pen like this, you know this is not right. When you looked at the Parker 51, that would not be so easy to understand because the nib is very small and if you do like this you're not in the right angle and it's not that easy to check. But I'll talk about that in a second. So this was the first hooded nib, as far as I know, the first hooded nib ever and Parker made several designs of pens with hooded nibs throughout times. There are a little, some more that I don't have but I'm thinking right now about the Parker 21, the Parker 41, uh, the Parker 61, the Parker 100. I don't have a 41 to show you, but I have the Parker 21 that was released and was on the market around the same time as the Parker 51. It was a cheaper pen with steel nib instead or octanium nib uh, instead, instead of gold nib. It had a different clutch ring, different nib that was not hooded nib and different opening on the on the the barrel on the section there different sack this one is very used but this is an interesting version there was also the parker 61 and parker 61 solved the problem that i told you how should we hold the pen because you can't see it they made some years after this one like an upgrade, they made the Parker 50, 61. The Parker 61, the original model, was very interesting because it was a pen with the... Uh, I forgot the name of this, sorry. This is a, um, a suction type filling system. Uh, this, is cap uh, this fills for, uh, by capillarity, it's a capillary filler. So it means you have the ink, you put the pen like this and there is a, like a little sponge there that will absorb ink into a reserv uh, reservoir and it will be ready to, to write. You just wipe this, it has Teflon so it will not hold ink and it will write really well, so it's interesting. However, it clogged a lot and then they replaced it for cartridge. Uh, but this pen was an interesting pen because they made this. With that little arrow inserted there, you know every time how you are holding the pen. If you hold like this, you know it's not the right angle. If you do this, it's right. In this pen, in the Park 51, you can not know that. They are very, very similar pens. Then, much later, in the 2000s, they made this pen, which, which was an homage to the Parker 51, it is a Parker 100, you have the review on my channel here, so you can check it, it is a very, very good pen, a beautiful pen, and in my, um, in my thoughts, in, in my opinion, this is the best reincarnation ever of a Parker 51. Uh, they, al they also made a new Parker 51 in, but that was not really a Parker 51. Then they, make, they made a new Parker 51 in 2002, which, which was a special edition. I had one, but I sold it because I never used it. So, But you can check my review here on the channel also. I will try to post links for some of those pens that you are going to see for the reviews and some of them for the stores where they are available. And now, they just released the new Parker 51 for this year of 2021. This is not a limited edition, it's a regular edition, but it is a new version and the biggest difference in the, the way for the user is the way the threads are. It is also a 
cartridge pen, but we have to say that the Parker 51 in the, in its last uh, versions, it was also a cartridge pen, so you should not compare, okay, that's a aromatic version and that is a, a cartridge, yes, but the most recent 51, the most recent uh, more, uh, the most recent older Parker 51 was also a cartridge converter pen, like this one. So it's more like an evolution of the filling solution than uh, a really different difference in design, in my opinion. However, despite all these other models that Parker made after the Parker 51, Parker also made a lot of Parker 51s. I just brought here some examples. I have here uh, another Parker 51. This is an older one that has the aerometric filling system, but the rest of the pen is very similar with the same kind of hood and nib, but the clip is different. It has the blue diamond, but it's not blue, and it's blank, and then it says Parker there. And there were also other versions, like this one, which is also an aerometric version, but it has the not the, the silver colored nib, the silver colored cap, and there is this one has a sterling silver cap, and this is also a vacuumatic version. This cap is quite nice with very very small lines, and there there was also. In the later models, a new version of the Parker 51, which has a different kind of barrel, a different size of the ring, and a different shape of the section, more similar with the Parker 61, but without that golden arrow. And there were lots of models. I have here this little nice wooden box that I have, where I have some more variations of the Parker 51 including this very nice teal blue. I have the gold plated version, which is interesting also. And I have this one, which is a Parker 51 Special. I will make a review of a Parker 51 Special in some day. And this one has a cap that is made. This is not the original cap, it's black plastic, like the rest of the pen. It was made by Ariel Kulok in Argentina. And here it is another pen that was made by Ariel Kulok. This, this is only the cap that was made for, by him. And this is another pen that was made. He, had, he bought the original uh, tools in machinery to make the Parker 51s from the Parker factory in Argentina and he made the parts. So I bought from him in another time I bought this, um, the section and the barrel and I put here just a regular black inside of the parts of the pen here and I also bought the yellow jewel and I replaced the yellow jewel in this older Parker 51. I also have another one that's not here. I have lots of Parker 51s. Another one that, that has a very beautiful color, which is the forest green, and in that pen I bought um, a transparent uh, section and a clear tra a green and a transparent green jewel for that pen, also from Ariel Kulok. I'm going for lots of pen comparisons, but you know that sometimes I make longer videos, so... That's it. I think I have more to say about pen comparisons than about the particular pen itself. Then, in the end, I'll go to the writing sample. But, you know, this is the way I make videos. So, as I was telling you, this pen inspired many other Parker models, but it also inspired many, many other pens. And there are some pens that were inspired by these hooded nib that were very interesting. One of those was the Aurora 88, which had a hooded nib also, but this is a very, very, very good pen. It is girthier than the Parker 51, and it is a piston filler, in my opinion, is even a, bit, a better pen than the, Park, the Aurora 88 
uh, originated the Aurora 88 Duo Card, which was a cartridge filler pen, and then the 88 Duo Card originated the regular edition, the present edition, which is the Aurora Duo Card, simply, which is also very, very, very nice pen with a hooded or a semi-hooded nib. All these inspired by the Parker 51. But there were another, some other models around the world. We have here a crest pen from Japan. This pen also belonged to my grandfather, but he gave me this pen while he was still alive. And one day the tip broke. I have to try to remove the hood and to replace the, the nib one day because I would like to have this pen working. So this is a crest from Japan. There are also some other pens that are less well known in the world, which, like this, this is a Senator, which is an interesting Parker 51 look-alike, but it is a piston filler with, a, with an ink window, which is also interesting. I also have a Feliza, which is a Portuguese pen, also inspired, and this one has this kind of syringe type filler system. This pen is a very bad pen, but it's a Portuguese pen, so it's nice to see one. You have the Portuguese coat of arms, a part of Portuguese coat of arms there, on top of Academica, which is the name of the model. And we have a Spanish pen, that was this Inox Chrome 55 and it is very similar to the Parker 21 and more, what do we have more? I have here a Olympia this is a Super T Olympia which was a, you can see there, the T, Super T it was a Spanish pen also, it had this little ball there that was used to know how to orientate the nib as that little golden arrow on the Parker 50, 61 and it is a piston filler pen but there were also other piston filler pens like the German Caveco school pen or school Caveco, school Caveco with a semi-hooded nib or even one pen that is very well known, the Lamy 2000, that also has a semi-hooded nib. So this is also a piston filler. So this, there are lots of different variations. But besides these variations, we have to talk, obviously, of many Japanese, uh, many Chinese variations. I have here an Atami, which also has the same kind of nib. We have a Kako Retro with the same kind of hooded nib and even a Jin Hao uh, Sorry about the name, a Jin Hao 911 that also has the same style Then we have also the Jin Hao I forgot to put one here, but I don't think that is a problem I hope you understand that these were so many pens that I forgot one. The Jin Hao 91A that was the 51A that is similar to these ones. And presently there are some copies of the, these pen. And we have here one of the most famous ever, which is the Hero 616, the Hero, which is smaller, Hero 616. Two, and the Hero 616 Plus, which is a nicer pen than both of those, quite cheap. Um, these were aerometric fillers also, like the Parker 51, but this one, like that Parker 51, but these are, this is a cartridge converter pen. And more recently, we have a very nice pen, in my opinion, the Sung 613, that is a cartridge pen. This one is a fully transparent version. We also have the Sung 601, which is a vacuumatic version of Parker 51 with an ink window. I could say this is even an improvement 
on the original uh, Parker 51. I have here a Vingsung 601 flighter, which is all made of steel and vacuumatic filling system, and it has a, an optional steel section, which is very interesting. And finally, the most recent pen of the kind, which is the Jin Hao. 85, which I have to say that is heavily inspired by the modern Parker 51 for 2021. And so, this is the overview of everything else. Now let's see finally how this little Parker writes. And here we are with our pen and paper and let's see. First, I have to say something. I like this pen a lot because it belonged to my grandfather. When I got into fountain pens, not when I got into fountain pens, because I got into fountain pens a long time ago when I was a child, but when I started earning the money to buy fountain pens, I, well, I had to admire the Parker history because it has lots of variety and innovation. And so I was, I, there was like a fascination about the Parker 51. And I have to say that the Parker 51, I bought several, as you could see, but Parker 51 is not a pen that really impresses me that much. It impresses me in design, yes, because, and the way it was created and it was a success in the, when it was made. But, I think nowadays it's not a pen that will impress us that much. It impresses me mostly because of the what it represented back then. But it's not one of my favorite pens. But I had to show it to you. Just to check the final stuff before the writing sample, I want to show it next to a Parker Centennial Du Fold for size comparison and next to a Lamy Safari, this is the Umbra, and you can see that it is a little shorter than both and it is slimmer, but it's not a slim pen. This pen posts very well and in my opinion is made to be posted. The Parker Du Fold is not and the Lamy Safari also is not. And so you can see you have a nice sized pen when posted, but if you want to remove the, the, the cap, it will be roughly of the same size as the other two. And now, let's try to write with the pen and let's see if it will write because it was unkept for really, really a long time while I was making the video all in a row. So, this is the... Yes, it wrote. The Parker 51, the black costume version with aerometric filling system. The di main difference about aerometric and the vacuumatic is the, the vacuumatic takes a lot more ink, but the filling system uh, wears down more quickly, so you have to replace that filling system and not that easy. And so f I never found any Parker 51 that was not restored, that was a vacuumatic in working condition, but all the aerometrics I found, they were in working condition. So you can see that they, sometimes they have dry ink inside, so lots of flushing, but all the time the, this ink sack was working, but on the vacuumatics it was never. So. This is a pen that I would go for if I needed to buy a random Parker 51 vintage one, I would go for the aerometric filling system. The nib of this pen will be an F or an M, I'm not sure. I would say it's more a M because older Parker nibs were a little finer than this one. The then current days. The paper is the Rodia or Rodia because it's French, dot, pad, and the ink is my all-time favorite, is the Parker Quink Black. And I'm really using 
a vintage ink from a vintage and destroyed ink. The ink bottle is not destroyed, but the, the packaging it is. Just to show it to you. And I smeared the, the ink there, sorry. And so, the pen writes well. So, this is a very good pen for daily writing. I have to say that this pen is a little bit inconsistent in terms of ink flow. I never dismantled it to clean it properly, I just flushed it. Um, but I don't think the biggest problem is that. I cannot show that to you. But the, the, nib, the, the tines on this pen are slightly twisted, but they are smooth and they were uh, worn in that way. So I guess my grandfather should have written with this pen a lot. Maybe he put lots of force, lots of pressure when writing. And I think that he twisted the tips a little bit, but they are smooth as they are. So it's kind of strange and I cannot... It's not that I can't, but I, I have really hard time to find the right way to place this pen on paper and write with it. But after all, it writes well. It's more my problem than the problem of the pen. And I would say that other Parker 51s that I already inked before, yes, they work better than this one. And I think this is a kind of a very personal nib adjustment it had. So, the pen is an interesting pen with a gold nib, but this gold nib is a gold nib that will not provide you any line variation because this is a stiff nib pen and the, 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 the tip of the nib is next to the tip of the shell of the, of the hood or the section, how you prefer to call it. So it doesn't have any place to flex. They are hard nibs and people sometimes, ah, I want a gold. No, you don't need a gold nibbed Parker 51 because if you are paying the extra price, I don't think it will uh, be that interesting. But there are more Parker 51s with gold nibs than with steel nibs. Then you can write in reverse in a much finer line and you really can keep up with this writing. I find almost all the time kind of stupid to write with the underside of the nib. I know that sometimes you may need to put a small note over a text to, and you need to fit it in, so you need to have a, a narrow uh, a narrower line, but you write like this or like this. It makes no sense writing like this. When you are writing with a Parker 51, in this case, if people look for, from afar, they will not know if you are writing the right way or not, and it's not aesthetically ugly. So you can have a very narrow extra fine line or you can have a regular fine to medium line. So this is a very good pen with no line variation, wet enough. It's not a very wet pen. I would say that this kind of nib is quite inexpressive. If you want more expressive nibs from a Parker 51, maybe you need a stub nib or something like that. I don't think you have that amazing writing experience of a Parker 51. However, Parker 51s are very nice writers. And if you are writing a book, that's why this is one of those pens that I call a writer's pen. If you are writing a book, you can write with it for a long time. It takes a lot of ink. The, inks, the, the ink delivery system is very good. So you can write a long time for, with it and very comfortably. So this is it. This is my review of the Parker 51. You can find it still inexpensively, it depends. Sometimes you can get them from 
50 or 60 euros but sometimes you need to do some adjustments cleaning or maybe replacing some parts so it I would say it will be more on the 100 euros for having a very nice and functional pen and so this is all I had to show you I have to thank you all for watching thank you for your patience because I show you lots of pens I know but I think I need to do it, it somehow makes sense to see the variety and how the pens integrate in fountain pen history and I'll be back soon and soon I will review this new version of the Parker 51 and I want to make also a versus video where I will compare both vintage and modern model. So. I hope to meet you here on the channel again very soon and bye.